One common question is how to check a set of controls for a particular value or condition. This situation here, the user wants at least one of the text boxes to contain a value. In other words, two can be null, empty, and one needs text in it. You would think you would write code to say, look at this text box, is it empty or not? Now look at this text box, if this text box is empty, and if this text box is empty. You can imagine a big, fantastic if statement. I mean, if you had 30 text boxes, it'd be a right mess and it'd take ages to write. That's a situation you want to avoid. This approach, once you grasp it, and it's not straightforward to grasp, but once you've got this approach in your repertoire of coding, you'll, you'll find it crop up in lots of places and it's a satisfactory way of programming. Basically, you're object orientated. You're looking at an object and using your code in that way. So it's a good step from standard coding into more advanced coding. So it's worth learning. Click on this button, it returns a message box. Three text boxes have null values. Now, so if I put something in that one, now it's telling me two text boxes have null values. And if I rub that out and put something in that one, we've still got two text boxes have null values. And if we rub out that, we're back to three text boxes have null value. How's this working? Let's look at the code. So I'm just going view code, and that's the piece of code. What it does, it, here's the routine, that's the button, it just calls that routine there. And then it looks through all of the controls on the form. So what we're saying is for each control in me controls, that tells the code that you want to look through each control on the form. That's not text boxes, that's every single control on that form. And in this case, a very simple form, it's just got labels and text boxes on it. But if it had check boxes, combo boxes, list boxes, anything else on there, it would look through all those as well. So you want to reduce that. So what you do, you say, if the control type, the control I'm looking at, if it's a text box, then do this. But if it's not a text box, it skips and goes around again. So you only end up checking the text boxes, which is what you want. Then you say, is it null, the value of the control? So you've grabbed the control there, you've passed it into a control variable there, and then you just check its value, and you say if its value is null, count how many nulls, add to the integer counter 1, and that's all that loop does. When the loop finishes, the message box tells you the value in the int counter, and that's basically what's happening here. Here's a slightly different example using basically the same code, but this is written slightly differently because it's operating on checkboxes and not on text boxes. The user wanted one checkbox to be checked all the time. So I've checked them all. Now if I uncheck, now if I go to the last one, notice I'm trying to uncheck that checkbox and it won't let me. So I'll just prove I can uncheck it. I'll check that, then I'll uncheck this one. Now if I try and uncheck this one, it won't uncheck. So if I check this one, now you can see I can uncheck that one. It won't let me uncheck that one, but I can check them all. I can uncheck that one. So can you see that's quite useful? If you want to ensure that your user makes at least one selection, this would be quite a handy piece of code. Again, try and imagine writing that in a logical step-by-step -step way. You'd have to look at the value in a checkbox, probably record it somewhere. You'd have to make lots of quite complicated decisions. You might have thought from the text field one I showed just now, well, I'll, I'll use case statements, if statements, I, I like that, I know how to use it. I, and I agree with you, you're always better off using the stuff you know. But you tell me how to do this with a case statement, you know, it's, it's getting complicated. You might be able to do it with these three. Imagine doing it with 30. So let's have a look at the code. We're going to design view. Now I'm clicking on view code button in the top right hand corner. This code is similar to the other code. I've made a couple of slight alterations. It's not calling a message box. So I could make it called a message box by undoing that there. It's being called from the click event of each of the checkboxes. And then it runs this code and it's passing the name of that checkbox. So that's the name of the checkbox. And it's passing that checkbox as a control into this function. So this function is expecting a checkbox to be passed in and then it takes that checkbox and uses it down here. 
So again, same as the other one, you're saying you dim a, a control variable and then you say for each control in me controls, me, that's referring to me, the form. You're saying for each control in me controls, now this time we're not looking for a text box, we're looking for a checkbox. And that was daft, messed that up. If control type is checkbox, now this time we're just taking the value. We're not saying is it null, is it true, or is it false, we're just taking the value. Now you might say, how are we looking at that control? Why is it working in that if statement like that? Because an if statement's going to want a true or a false value. We're dealing with a checkbox, and if you think about a checkbox, that's all it has. It has a true or a false value. So you can say, look at my value, you know it's going to be true or false. The if statement is expecting a true or false value, so if it's true, which means it's checked, it adds one to the counter. It goes to find the next checkbox. It looks through and it might see one that's not checked, so you don't add it on. So it just builds up the number of checkboxes which are checked there. And then this is the bit that does the interesting part. If it's zero, none of the checkboxes are checked. So when you press on a checkbox which has got the tick in, the first thing it does, it actually unchecks it. When I showed you in the video the checkbox and it wouldn't allow you to uncheck it, it actually did. For a split second, the checkbox was unchecked. And then this code ran and it said the counter is showing zero. So now make me true. So the checkbox you passed in, it changes it to true. So it's the one you're on. OK, the checkbox seven, you're passing that in. In this situation, it changes the checkbox seven. Now I'll just quickly show you the form again so you can relate now to the code you've seen. Like I said, if I try and check that, it should uncheck, but it doesn't. Well actually, like I said earlier in the video when I was looking at the code, it does uncheck. It becomes unchecked for a microsecond and then the code rechecks it. Now that's not obviously going to happen with these, I'm just checking these and they it's unchecked or checked. But it's just the last one that's showing. If you try and uncheck it, it stays. I hope you can see this is a useful technique in itself if you want a, a checkbox to be, remain checked. It's the process of getting there which is valuable. So if, if you learn this, it's, it's a valuable technique. Thank you.